This is one of the topics I'm the most curious to explore in 2021. So let's get right to it. Boom and grow YouTube show. Hi, plant friends. I am in my new space, tours of the meditative planty corner, my new planty office, and this amazing home that we have had the good fortune to move into coming soon. But for now, I want to talk to you about with this new home, I have gotten super curious about the topic of seed starting. We went from 500 square feet in New York City to five acres in upstate New York. Um, and I am like so excited to have a real live garden this year outdoors that is beyond just my amazing houseplants. Don't worry guys, you're still always gonna be my number one, I promise. Um, so, I've never started seeds. Well, I started seeds before once and it was the most cobbled together <laughs> insane setup. It was really fun and successful. But this year I'm really excited to like do my garden right. And in part, I am really excited to actually try seed starting the right way with the right setup and actually looking at a calendar and actually getting the plants into the ground at the right time, which is something I did not do last time. And so I'm so excited because I just had Joe Lample, the famous gardener behind the Joe Gardner brand podcast, Growing a Greener World TV show. The podcast episode was so epic um, and super helpful. Joe is just so experienced and such a wealth of knowledge. But a big thing that came up in our conversation was the thought process behind cost and seed starting. Because I think a reason why I've been so intimidated by seed starting is that I feel like it's just like a whole nother setup to buy and it can be actually kind of expensive. So in this like little conversation that Joe ha and I had in this big conversation, we dive into how seed starting can be super affordable and Joe has started all the seeds for his entire garden for under $25 one year and he dove into how to do that. So I wanted to share this little portion of our larger conversation with you and the video um, and also let you know that Joe is launching his master seed starting course. I am so excited because I'm taking the course because I'm so excited to learn from Joe. I took his organic gardening course last year and I loved it. I'll talk more about it at the end of this episode. But if you want to take the seed starting course alongside me, Joe and I are actually partnering up and offering a free Zoom call for anyone who signs up with my affiliate link, which is in the show notes. More about that at the end of this episode. So for now, kick back, relax, and enjoy Joe. But that brings up, so the expense. So I think some people get really intimidated by, yeah, mm -hmm. the seeds are cheap, but I got to buy a grow light. I got to buy heating mats. I got to buy all these things. So what is the setup? I know that you can spend a thousand dollars on a seed set seed starting setup if you wanted to, right. but what is like the most basic beyond what I did, which I would not do again, which was like cobbling together, you know, my heating pad and saran wrap and, you know, an old egg carton. What's mm -hmm. like a good entry level seed starting setup that is setting us up for success, but also like not going to blow my budget. Yeah. I'd say for well under a hundred dollars, you could put together everything that you need. And that's just a number I'm, I'm really? thinking off the top of my head. And let's just piece that together. You need good seed starting mix. That's the soil. And it's called soilless mix because there's really no dirt in it. It's it's uh, natural ingredients like uh, peat moss and um, vermiculite or perlite. Usually it's perlite. And sometimes that's all it is. Sometimes it's a coconut core, which is just a husk of coconuts ground up. I don't like that as much just because it's got a little bit of salt in it typically and it creates some challenges, but it works. And they're getting better with that. That's an alternative to peat, which isn't always considered to be a sustainable option. But mm -hmm. the traditional seed starting mix is a peat-based product. And so a bag of that, is going to cost four dollars and you're going to be able to fill about two seed starting trays okay. and two seed starting trays can give you anywhere from 18 to 36 to 72 slots to sow your seeds so you can have yeah. plenty you have plenty of plants in one tray let alone mm -hmm. two so you've spent maybe five bucks for the each tray so maybe 10 if you get two this bag of soil is five bucks let's round it up to 10 so now mm -hmm. we've spent somewhere between 10 and 20 dollars you need uh, a light and so that's where you could spend a lot of money and there is as you know from talking to leslie hallett there is a lot of opportunity to spend some good money on some very sophisticated grow lights yeah that said and they they do a great job but that said if you're on a budget there is nothing wrong with buying a LED or a fluorescent shop light for 20 bucks. 
yeah, there's definitely affordable grow light options. Absolutely. For sure. And mm -hmm. I've got to tell you, I have every spectrum covered with lights from the cheapest of the cheap to the most expensive. And the fact of the matter is you can get your seeds sprouted and up to and ready for planting outside in, a, in good condition with a very inexpensive shop light. Mm -hmm. Will it be as good as a seedling that's under a more expensive light? Maybe not, probably not. But all you're really trying to do when you think about it is rear those seedlings to the point that they are ready to go outside. Because once they get outside, mother nature knows what to do and so does that seedling. So when yeah. they connect outside, the magic happens. So you're really just nursing them along for about six weeks to get to that point and you don't need to spend a fortune to do it. So you've got your seed trays, your soil, your light, and probably and not required, depending on where you live, a uh, germination mat, which is that heat mat. And that is going to raise the soil temperature, which is going to help your seeds sprout faster. Seeds have an ideal range of soil temperature in which they sprout the best. If they're within that range, and the range is usually pretty forgiving, such as tomato seeds can be anywhere from 50 degrees to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So most mm -hmm. people have that without a heat mat. Right. But you can speed it up a little bit. So that's going to cost you probably between 15 and $35, depending on whether you get a thermostat attached or whatnot. But, you know, that's not a must-have. That's a nice-to-have. It's not a need-to-have. So, I think, too with yeah. houseplant people, yeah. a lot of people in the houseplant community double their seeds, their heat maps. They use them and I'm actually excited to buy one because I'm excited to use this trick. Um, people use them as houseplant uh, hospitals where if your houseplant isn't doing well, they'll actually take the, the heating mat, put the plant on the heating mat with uh, water and kind of create a little microclimate. Some mm -hmm. of them like put a cloche on top yeah. Um, and actually help resuscitate struggling houseplants um, nice. with that. So that's another way of doubling it with, how, you know, with houseplants mm -hmm. too, if you're, you are going to invest in one. Yep. A couple other things I can think of, Maria. Uh, a mm -hmm. humidity dome, which is what you want to do. It's a clear plastic top that you put over the seed tray to hold the moisture in the soil until the seed germinates. If right. you don't have a cover on it, the moisture won't stay in the soil and therefore the mm -hmm. seed is not as likely to germinate. The seed needs to imbibe water or moisture into the seed to initiate germination. And so the way that you do that is you ensure that the moisture stays in the soil until the seed germinates. And you don't even have to buy a, a special top, which is about $3 to go over the seed tray. You can use, as you've done, saran wrap or plastic mm -hmm. wrap and lay it over the top. That's a barrier to hold the moisture in and that's a lot less expensive. So there's that. And then the one other thing I was going to say is a fan, a cheap clip on fan, get them on Amazon for 15 bucks. Uh, and I, I think those are important because once the seedling or seed germinates, you need air movement across that soil surface to reduce the chance of a fungal disease called damping off. Right. And damping off can kill your seedlings dead and it spreads pretty quickly. But the more opportunity you have to push air across the soil surface, the less likely you're going to have that problem. And so it's an investment that's well worth it. And then you can run the fans. That makes the stems a little sturdier too along the way. So it's more like outdoor. Wind, right. Mm -hmm. It's wind. So with the fans, if you're putting a clear bin on top or saran wrap on top, how is that air getting under it? You, you, don't want, you don't need the air under it. You just need the air there once the seedling sprouts. So you're removing the plastic oh, or the take dome. the plastic off. Yes. That's when the seedling is susceptible. The stem is susceptible is once it's sprouted. Gotcha. Gotcha. So by then, that, you're taking off the plastic by then. Okay. The, I, this was a listener question. Do you need seed starting mix? Can you use potting mix for this? Or should you, you really make sure you go... Uh, What's it called? Sterile, sterile mix? S soilless or sterile. Soilless. Yeah, soilless mm -hmm. or sterile. You can use potty mix, and a lot of people do. Um, it's just a little bit heavier, a little bit chunkier sometimes, but the premise is still the same. If you look at the ingredients on potty mix, it's, t mix, it's typically going to have peat moss, perlite, maybe some forest products, which is still mm -hmm. fine, and um, maybe a, a slow-release fertilizer. That may be the difference. Most seed starting mixes don't have slow release fertilizer in it or any fertilizer in it. And if so, maybe okay. just a trace. But seeds 
have what they need nutrition wise within them to initiate germination and get to the point of pushing out their first set of true leaves. After that, you could supplement the fertilization, but the seed starting mix usually doesn't have much supplemental fertilizer. Potty mix usually has some sort of slow right. release fertilizer. Um, but all in all, all, all said, um, there's not a lot of difference between potty mix. It's a little chunkier. Seed starting mix is super fine typically, which is mm -hmm. probably a better environment for tender seeds to sprout and get through that, you know, the soil lit part without right. too much interference, physical interference. Because fine soil, I guess, also retains moisture better and its seeds need some moisture in order to germinate, right? Well, I mean, both, both of the potty mix and the seed starting mix are going to probably have either, mm -hmm. they're either going to have peat moss or um, core, which both retains water. But the reason they add perlite or vermiculite, usually it's perlite, the little white styrofoamy looking pellets in there, that's what creates airspace and moisture retention. So that's Got why it. you always see that in there. Yeah. And um, we had briefly said, uh, do you have any suggestions for the trays? Because I used my egg cartons that I poked holes in the bottom, which was a fun upcycling moment. Mm -hmm. um, but I have seen these like fancy seed starting trays. And then I also see the kind of compostable options where you can actually put the whole cup of your started seed in the pot or in the ground. So yeah. do you have recommendations for that? I like to start off with... Um tray uh cells the size of the opening of the tray mm -hmm. at three and a half inches or smaller so three and a half inch tray is typically going to give you 18 compartments to sow seeds mm -hmm. and you could do one seed per compartment uh or you can go down to little tiny compartments and then you're getting about 72 places to sow into in a, in a 10 inch by 20 inch tray that's the called a standard or typical size of a seed tray and, and I like those better than like an egg carton. I, I'm all about repurposing, recycling, and, and making use of what we already have. But um, I like the depth of a traditional seed starting tray. Mm, so the yeah. roots have more room to go down. Totally. Because you're probably going to be transplanting that seedling before it's ready to go outside anyway. So what you want to do is just give them a nice environment to get deep roots when they're from sprouting until they get, you know, about four weeks in, and then they're probably going to be, the root mass is going to be too big for the environment that they've been started in. And that's when you're going to have to bump them up into a larger individual tray, or maybe that compostable tray that you talked about, a uh, uh, pot, like mm -hmm. a peat pot or a cow pot right. or something like that. Um, but, you know, the other thing that you can do is get your takeout trays from your, you know, your whatever food, your, your salad things that you get at the store or the delivery things, they come in those food containers. Mm -hmm. Those are perfect. And they come with that plastic top. So that can be the thing. Like right. you said, you poke holes in the bottom for drainage to so have something to catch the drainage, but you can put your seed starting mix in that. Usually those are deep enough. They're probably two, two and a half, three inches deep. That's perfect. And then you have that plastic dome that's free. So you've spent no money other than for the food that came in it to yeah. make, to repurpose it for your seed starting. And I've done that a lot. One thing I did a uh, years ago, I did a campaign called the $25 organic victory garden challenge. And I, and I started a garden for the entire season to feed my whole family of four with a budget. I gave myself a $25 or less. I ended wow. up spending $12 and five cents and in, in total. And so my seed starting trays were pizza boxes. So I just, I used the pizza Interesting. box. Interesting. But okay. my seeds, the only money I spent was on seed starting the soil, the soilless mm -hmm. mix, and a couple tomato plants that I bought later because I was worried that my other ones weren't going to catch up, which they did. <laughs> but you use your imagination. If you're really on a budget, just look around at what you have and what you can use, right. and it's going to work. And those, um, those pizza boxes were great. And then I went to the grocery store, to the bakery department, and I asked them if I could have some of the um, cake toppers that come. When you buy a cake at a bakery or a grocery store, they put it on a sturdy plastic tray that has a, a tight fitting plastic lid and yes. the, cake, the cake is inside of it. That's the perfect greenhouse. And the only reason I know this is the day that I thought about the pizza boxes, it was on my birthday and um, somebody got me a cake and it came in one of those plastic lids with a sturdy plastic bottom. 
And that night we had pizza for my birthday. So I said, the pizza box, I got that aha moment. I said, that's my perfect seed starting tray. And then when the cake came out and it was in that plastic thing, I said, well, there's my little greenhouse plastic cover. And so I'd spent no money and I had everything I needed that season to do my seeds starting for nothing. I hope that conversation was as eye-opening for you as it was for me. I definitely had like the cheapest setup ever in the original seed starting setup that I did. I used an egg carton, a heating pad, um, water and saran wrap. I'm excited to like up level my seed starting setup a little bit, but it's nice to know that you can kind of pick and choose where you want to prioritize spending. And I can't wait to bring you along for the ride of my outdoor garden this year. And speaking of, I'm so excited to take this master seed starting course that Joe is offering. It's so in depth. And I took his organic gardening masterclass last year in the pandemic. It was amazing. I, I actually binged the whole course over a weekend. And not only is the actual course content really amazing, but the Facebook group that he gives as part of the course bundle, it's so responsive. I still post a year later in that Facebook group. And every time I post a question, 10 people rush to my defense and try and help me out. So he's great at building community. I'm really excited to take the course. If you want to take the course with me, Joe and I have partnered up for the launch of this course. It's only open for a specific amount of time. You can find the details in the show notes. And anyone who signs up through my affiliate link, which is in the show notes, is going to get access to a free extra Zoom call with me and Joe. So we'll all take the class and then two months after the class launches, Joe is going to join us for a Zoom call where we can ask him all of the specific questions once we've gone through the course, maybe planned our gardens, then we're all going to hop on the Zoom call and chat and learn and grow together. I'm so excited and know I'm going to have so many questions for him on that Zoom call. So if you're interested in taking the course with me, check the link in the show notes. And if you're curious about what affiliate link means, I'm sure you see a lot of YouTubers talk about it. All it means is I've partnered with Joe on his launch and anyone who buys the course through me and that specific link that's in the box below, I actually get a portion or Bloom and Grow gets a portion of the sales of that class that gets to go to supporting Bloom and Grow. So by buying the class, you're supporting yourself, growing your knowledge, you're supporting Joe who's amazing and you're also supporting Bloom and Grow so I can make more videos for you. So thanks in advance. Also, if you want a free way to support Bloom and Grow, please subscribe and like this video and maybe drop a comment below and let me know if you've started seeds before and if you have started what you're curious or excited to grow again this year. Okay, sweet plant friends, until next time, keep blooming and keep growing.